Dubious ones, welcome back to the channel for some more all-in reviews from Wembley Stadium. Before we get into it, make sure you smash that subscribe, hit the like button, and leave me your feedback on this match in the comment section down below. So now we are moving on to the Casino Gauntlet. So this match is a little interesting as it's kind of like a cross between like a Royal Rumble and like a money in the bank, but in a gauntlet match. So first person to get a pin or uh, submission ends the match. So you don't even need all the entrants in the match to uh, to win it. So it's an interesting stipulation match that is very unique to AEW that I think um, could really catch on. I really enjoyed it this year, but let's get right into uh, the review. So let's get a little recap first. So if it started out um, with, I believe, what was a Mr. Bean callback. A little vignette of Orange Cassidy falling from the sky under a big spotlight. I believe this was uh, the intro to the Mr. Bean show, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, regardless, it gets a big pop, and then Okada draws number two. So we are starting the ma match with two members of Chaos. Well, Okada, I guess, is he a former member of Chaos in New Japan? I don't really know, but I thought it was pretty cool that we got Okada and Orange Cassidy to start this out. Fans go nuts, chanting for Okada when he comes down to the ring. Tony Schiavone on commentary, clarifying, whomever wins this match gets a world title shot any time they want. Even going as far as to say, if you've got that contract, you can say, I want it today. So is this foreshadowing for later in our main event? We'll have to wait and see. But Okada then opens his arms, brings Orange Cassidy in for a hug as the match begins, as they were both members of Chaos in New Japan. I did forget about that going into this, but you know, the announcers kept us up to speed on that. But as soon as they hug, Okada gives a look to the camera and begins hammering down on Orange Cassidy. Just the little things that Okada does is what sets him apart. And that little look to the camera, I really appreciated that. Um, but this was, uh, this was fun, as Okada then, uh, after giving the look to the camera, began hammering down on Orange Cassidy. Nigel McGuinness was the next to enter the match, and then uh, the fans go absolutely crazy, obviously, as this is the first time we've seen Nigel McGuinness come out of retirement, and here at Wembley Stadium, he looks incredible, and if he were to win this match, what foreshadowing could that be for our main event? Could you imagine if Nigel wins this match, and Brian were to win the, the uh, world title, and then Nigel McGuinness were to cash in on Brian at the end of the night. And we end all in Wembley with Nigel McGuinness as your new AEW World Champion. That would be crazy. Um, Nigel gets the upper hand on both Okada and Orange Cassidy. As the cl countdown clock brings us to our next competitor, Kyle O'Reilly is out next. O'Reilly gets in some offense in as the fans all start singing in unison. Oh, Nigel McGuinness. Oh, Nigel McGuinness. Orange Cassidy and Kyle O'Reilly take over the match as we get to the next entrant, which is Zack Sabre Jr. The fans went absolutely nuts when Zack Sabre Jr.'s music hit and when it came on the Titantron. Another dream a rematch if Brian were to win the world title later on in the night could you imagine if Zack Sabre Jr. were to win this contract and cash in at the end of the night and Zack Sabre Jr. leaves Wembley as your AEW world champion that would be absolutely nuts as they are here in London that would drive the fans nuts in a good way um, Zach clears the ring and we get a standoff between Zack Sabre Jr. and Nigel McGuinness. The fans go absolutely bonkers for this, cheering while giving a standing ovation uh, at the same time that breaks into holy shit chants. They exchange European uppercuts as the fans chant, this is wrestling, dun 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 dun, this is wrestling. Uh, Okada slides back into the ring and knocks Nigel down and faces off with Zack Sabre Jr. The fans boo as Okada smiles ear to ear. Zack pretzels him up into a submission that Okada reverses into a shoulder breaker over his knee, then hits his pat patented elbow drop off the top rope. He gives the Rainmaker pose tease, 
but then gives the finger to the fans instead, you know, like it's all, which is great. I uh, love the heel Okada. I definitely do miss main event Okada, but I think we will get there during his AEW run for sure. They're paying him too much not to have him become main event Okada. But I do enjoy his little mannerisms and the things he's doing as a heel, and I understand a lot of it is because of his English, right, as he's learning and getting better. I mean, I still think his promos are quite fun, but to get him to that main event level, I can understand they might want to take their time with him, have him play in this heelish kind of comedy character. And I don't hate it, but, I mean, obviously we all want to see main event Okada um, in AEW. Anyway, Zack Sabre Jr. then gets the upper hand, putting both Okada and Kyle O'Reilly into a submission at the same time. We then get our next entrant, which is Roderick Strong, who comes in hot, hitting backbreakers left, right, and center. Then all of a sudden, we get the countdown clock far faster than the last, uh, than, than we did before, Z uh, or before Roderick Strong came out. There's a long period before the clock came up. This one, it seemed to come out right as Roderick got Strong got some offense in. Boom, the clock was right there where the announcers have to save it by stating, we don't know how long each of these intervals will be, as there's not a set time. They just, they're just they just random. Um, I thought it would kind of be fun. It, it uh, was kind of funny, because the Royal, Ruff, or bleh, sorry, the Royal Rumble often does this with their 90-second intervals, which are never really 90 seconds. Like, they'll kind of throw in people whenever they want. Sometimes it goes over 90 seconds. Sometimes it's under 90 seconds. But this was literally less than, like, 30 seconds after the last entrant where there's probably about two minutes in between the entrance before that. Regardless, at least this match, there isn't a set time that we're told of ahead of time that each wrestler comes in at, so I can forgive them for that. It is a fun it is a fun um, gimmick match that they've come up with, so I'm not going to hate on it too, too much. Um, but Mark Briscoe comes out next. He gets a nice ovation. He gets in a little offense on everybody. And then we get our next entrant, which is Hangman Page. Fans get a huge pop as Hangman comes out, and he gets some massive pyro. Uh, Orange Cassidy tries diving out of the ring right at him as he enters the match, but Hangman catches him out of midair, shoves him aside. Fans start chanting, Cowboy shit! Cowboy shit! And Hangman just wrecks shop. The announcers remind us if Hangman wins, he gets a shot anytime he wants. So, we know he wants Swerve, so if Swerve were to defeat Brian tonight and retire Brian, Brian Hangman could also cash in and leave Wembley as world champion. Or maybe he is able to cash in in the middle of the match, like a Seth Rollins when it was like Brock Roman style, and then Brian doesn't lose to Swerve, but he loses the world title match. Hangman wins it. Is Brian still forced into retirement then because he didn't lose the match against Swerve? Like, how does that go? So that's a possibility. A lot, of, a lot of things are thrown at us here with the different entrances and getting our wheels to turn, letting us kind of fantasy book in our heads a bit of what they could do um, just with the entrance in this match, which I thought was a lot of fun. Uh, Hangman just walks through everybody, clearing the ring, then catching uh, Orange Cassidy out of midair again, hitting a follow-away slam to Orange, then a crossbody to the outside on Akata, hits a big boot to Nigel McGuinness, then he catches Broderick Strong running at him with a pop-up powerbomb on the edge of the ring. They're literally giving the world to Hangman Page at this point, just beating down everybody with some amazing offense. Fans go nuts. He then goes for a buckshot on Orange Cassidy, but OC ducks. Still gets hit with a dead eye instead. Um, Briscoe then saves the match as Hangman went for the pin. And then we get our next entrant. wee -hoo, wee -hoo. Jeff Jarrett's music hits, and he comes out. And he squares off with Hangman. They come to blows. Then the rest of the ring fills up. Jarrett gets his moment on each of them, knocking everyone back and outside of the ring. He does his little Fargo strut, you know, the Ric Flair strut. And then pegs Han Hangman in the corner. Goes for his ten punches in the turnbuckle on Hangman, as they do. Um, and the fans are into it. But before he gets to ten, Hangman picks him up. Last ride, powerbomb Undertaker style. And powers power bombs him onto the outside of the ring onto everyone else in the match that caught him on the outside. Then we get our next entrant, and it is none other than... Boom! It was speculated forever. Ricochet! So Ricochet enters the match. The fans go absolutely crazy. Then Ricochet gets in the ring and starts doing Ricochet things. He knocks down... He knocks Hangman to the outside. Fans are going crazy. Fans start, fans start chanting for Ricochet as he continues to do Ricochet things knocking everyone on the outside. Then he does a diving shooting star press to the outside onto everyone. 
And then we get our next entrant, which is none other than the Patriarchy himself, Christian Cage. Had a brutal trios match earlier in the match, in that ladder match, so Christian is literally limping his way to the ring. And then he gets dove onto, well, he's still on the outside, over the top, or like from the top rope by Ricochet. Ricochet then gets back in the ring, but he gets hit by a buckshot lariat by Hangman Page. But that pin is calmly broken up by Okada. Okada and Hangman then square off. Hangman gets the upper hand and is about to go for a buckshot lariat on Okada when Karen Jarrett holds on to the leg of uh, Hangman Page, giving uh, Jeff Jarrett enough time to get back in the ring with a guitar, and he blasts it over Hangman's head and then hits, uh, and then Jarrett then hit uh, gets hit, sorry, um, by Okada with a Rainmaker. Zack Sabre Jr. then gets in the ring. Okada goes for a Rainmaker on him, but gets reversed into an armbar. Orange Cassidy breaks it up by rolling up Zack Sabre Jr. to only get a two count, but gets up and hits the orange punch to Okada, knocking Okada out. Zack Sabre Jr. then hits a number of pinning combinations on Cassidy. Cassidy escapes them all and then hits an orange punch to Zack Sabre Jr. We get a cluster of guys hitting the ring, one after the other hitting high spots and finishes on one another until we finally get to Nigel McGuinness hitting a Tower of London on both Mark Briscoe and Kyle O'Reilly for a long two count. Fans went nuts for this. Christian then sneaks in, hits a spear, and but we get one more contestant coming to the ring before Christian can go for a page, and it's Luchasaurus. He's not announced as Quil Kill Switch, and he came out to um, his Jurassic Express theme. He then teases attacking Christian as the as the announcers are really playing this up. Um, but he then chokeslams Kyle O'Reilly instead, and then he places Christian's prone body on top of Kyle O'Reilly, and Christian gets the three count on Kyle O'Reilly after the choke slam on Kyle O'Reilly, and Christian is your contract winner. Really strange to me with all the guys in this match and the different angles and the fantasy booking they get you to do in your head, that Christian is the one who comes out on top so Christian will get a world title shot anytime he wants. Now, I'm definitely a little surprised at the finish, um, but I thought this match was, uh, I thought it was pretty fun. Like, I, I really enjoyed this match. Um, again, very, very surprised that Christian was the winner, but it was a fun match. I had really low expectations going into it and was very pleasantly surprised. I thought it was a great match, full of some fun surprises, Ricochet was an incredible surprise. This is the perfect match to debut him in because this is kind of like their Royal Rumble to have those big debuts. So very cool. Uh, definitely gave me that Royal Rumble vibe when we got like Nigel McGuinness, you know, a commentator making his entrance into this match. And then you get who was announcing earlier in the night as well. And then you get like the Jeff Jarrett's. You get, you know, your hangman pages for your big spots. But then you get a big surprise like Ricochet. I thought it was great. Very much a Royal Rumble vibe to this, but because it's like pin or submission, first one to get it, they have the countdown clock, but then the title shot, um, they were kind of vague, intentionally vague, on whether it's like a Money in the Bank stipula stipulation where do you have to announce the cash in first, or can you just go in the middle of a match, cash it in, or right after someone's you know won or lost a match and cash it in on them, I guess won the match. Um, it's not clear, and I think it's intentionally vague that way. But I like it. I like it as a gimmick match for AEW because it's just different enough and it combines the coolest parts of Money in the Bank and the Royal Rumble with a different kind of match. So I really actually do appreciate that and I like it a lot. Um, I really love the surprise of getting, you know, not just Nigel McGuinness, but Zack Sabre Jr. and Ricochet. So for me, I definitely cannot complain about this match. Christian being the right winner, I don't really know. Um, he's proven to be one of the best heels in the company at certain points in time. So when given the spotlight, he's de when given the spotlight, he's definitely proven himself. Um, whether he can really still be in a main event program, I mean, I think given the spotlight, given the opportunity, I think he's definitely capable of having a great main event program. The question is, is he just winning this match to lose it, lose to either Swerve or Danielson, like as their next TV program? Or are we going to get like a Money in the Bank style tease from Christian all the time where he's teasing constantly that he's going to cash in, he doesn't, and then he's like uses it as like the ultimate opportunist kind of thing. 
and then you have Edge come back, or sorry, Adam Copeland come back, and then have a big feud with him as a world title program. Are they going to go that way? I don't know. I think more likely you're probably getting a TV program with either Swerve or Danielson, whoever wins the main event. I think you're probably just going to get your next TV program out of this, um, but we'll have to wait and see and see how things go. I think I'd like it more, I think, if they teased it like a Money in the Bank style and had it where you could cash in whenever he wants, but we'll have to see. Because uh, the, uh, the announcers went out of, the way, way, out of their way saying that they can cash this in on any given day, but does it mean, again, is it Money in the Bank rules fully or do they announce the match ahead of time? So I think it's really intentionally vague to leave them this, the freedom that way. But as far as a rating for this match, I definitely love the surprises. I thought this, uh, for the type of match it is, it really worked out well and I really enjoyed it. There wasn't really any dull moments. Almost any time was about to feel that way. We got another entrant into the match. They just put the countdown clock and we get the next person. As soon as things started getting to that feeling where it might start getting dull. Uh, so the pace of the match flowed really, really well for me. So for a rating, I'd have to give this match, I would say, a solid 7 out of 10. I give this match a 7 out of 10. It's a really fun gimmick match. Uh, if we had a different winner, I might have given it maybe a 7.5, maybe even an 8, just for the, the way the crowd might have popped for, say, like, say, a Jack, Zack Sabre Jr. or a Nigel McGuinness or even an Okada or a Ricochet winning. You know, something exciting like that. Christian w winning makes it feel like no matter who the champion is, Christian will likely be losing that program where you could really believe that a Nigel or a Zack Sabre Jr. or even a Hangman uh, could really be cashing in this contract or this this at the end of the night as a spoil um, for either Swerve or Danielson's all-in moment, depending on who wins that match, right? So either way, I really did enjoy this match uh, far more than I expected to. Going into another gimmick match, like, you know, being a different another gimmick match, I think this one has legs to it. Um, I don't know if it'll become its own pay-per-view like the Royal Rumble eventually did. Um, but I definitely think this uh, this gimmick has legs to it, and I definitely enjoyed this match. So I really enjoyed it. I hope you guys did as well. Um, that's going to do it for this one. Stay tuned for the channel. Sorry, stay tuned to the channel as I will be reviewing the rest of all in the remaining four or five matches that we have left on the card. I will be reviewing, putting them up on the channel for you guys very very soon here. So stay tuned to the channel. Check in for that. Like, subscribe, leave me your feedback. What did you think of the gauntlet match? I want to hear your takes on this and maybe some of the fantasy booking you were doing in your head as this match was going on. But that's going to do it for this one. Dubious ones, I appreciate you all. Thank you for watching. And until the next time, deuces.